There are issues in the Thousand Islands that have brought out huge crowds over the years. The threat of dredging a deeper seaway channel in the St. Lawrence River, concerns over winter navigation on the river, the system for managing water levels. Another one of those touchstone issues, galvanizing year-round and seasonal river rats alike, is here. The Border Patrol's plan to build a new facility in an undeveloped bay in the heart of the Thousand Islands. That's today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Long Run Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor in Lake Placid, providing comprehensive wealth management, retirement, and financial planning solutions. LongRunWealth.com. And from SciTech Business Solutions, training and consulting services to help businesses grow. More information at CITEC.org. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Wednesday, June 26th. First up, it was primary day in New York State yesterday, but there were few of them here in the North Country. In the highest profile one, Republican Congresswoman Claudia Tenney cruised to an easy victory over Mario Frado in the heavy GOP district that stretches from Watertown to suburban Buffalo. Tenney won with almost two thirds of the vote. In the race for the Democratic candidate for Plattsburgh mayor, County Legislator Wendell Hughes beat out Assistant District Attorney Dan Lennon 58 to 41 percent, according to unofficial returns. St. Lawrence, Hamilton, Lewis and Franklin counties all didn't have any primaries at all. The city of Plattsburgh is changing course on a major downtown development project. Kara Chapman has more. Plattsburgh was one of the first communities to receive a $10 million downtown revitalization initiative grant several years ago. More than $4 million was awarded to Prime Plattsburgh LLC. The company planned to build a mixed-use development with more than 100 apartments on the current Durkee Street parking lot downtown. But the project faced opposition from a group of local business owners and residents called the Plattsburgh Citizens Coalition. The coalition sued to stop the project and won. The Clinton County Supreme Court tossed out permit approvals in 2022. The city appealed, but an appellate court handed down the same result last year. The city decided to next take the fight to the Court of Appeals, which is the state's highest court. But Mayor Chris Rosenquist said in a statement yesterday that some news from Prime changed things. The mayor says Prime reached out confirming that it's still interested in a project, but not the specific one pending litigation. Essentially, the developer is abandoning the original project, so now the city is abandoning its appeal. Rosenquist says the city doesn't have all the details yet for the new project. He says the city is confident that Prime and the state are, quote, ready and excited to pursue a development opportunity that would fulfill the goals of continuing the revival efforts of our downtown. Rosenquist says it's a second chance the city cannot afford to miss. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio. New York State will invest $16 million in education and history projects that highlight overlooked achievements in the Black community. The state's Commission on African American History recommended the investments. Desiree Diorio reports for the New York Public News Network. The funding will go to programs that teach the history of Black New Yorkers, preserve historic and cultural heritage, and commemorate the state's abolition of slavery in 1827. Governor Kathy Hochul says some of the funding will be used for a ceremony in 2026 to observe the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first captured Africans at New Amsterdam Harbor in downtown Manhattan. The commission report also recommends programs that boost economic development in the black community. Hochul released the report to coincide with Juneteenth, the federal holiday marking the end of slavery in 1865. For the New York Public News Network, I'm Desiree DiOrio. More than 200 people came out in the Thousand Islands last night to show their opposition to a proposed new U.S. Customs and Border Protection facility on the St. Lawrence River. It would replace the current one on Wellesley Island. Border Patrol's plan to build in the relatively undeveloped Blind Bay has galvanized opposition from local residents, environmentalists, and even Congress people on both sides of the aisle. Last night was the first time that the public could comment about the project. And St. Lawrence Valley reporter Catherine Wheeler was there. She broke it down with Monica Sandresky this morning on Northern Light, starting with why Border Patrol wants to build on Blind Bay in the first place. 
Basically, the feds say they've outgrown the current building. They're at three times higher capacity than it was originally built for. And they say renovating it isn't really an option because the building is eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. They say Blind Bay is more centrally located on the St. Lawrence River. But local environmentalists say Blind Bay is a delicate river habitat, and the new facility would mean dredging, light pollution, damage to plants and wildlife. And the Thousand Islands Land Trust owns the land and shore in question and opposes the plan. So the federal government would likely have to take it by eminent domain. Well, so paint us a picture. What was the meeting like last night? It it was packed. Mm. The parking lot at the Ciro Recreation Arena in Clayton was completely full. People were decked out in Save Blind Bay t-shirts and stickers, and they had signs. There were booths set up outside. And at the beginning, people could walk around to tables where third-party federal contractors talked generally about the project, but many people said it left a lot to be desired. Some people I talked to at the event said they were disappointed that the actual decision makers from CBP weren't there to talk. This is Carol Ann Jacobs who says she's frustrated that she still doesn't know why Blind Bay is a preferred location. The Customs and Border Patrol person that was here, the analogy that he used is that it's it's like when you go buy a house and, you know, you have requirements for your house that you want four bedrooms and three baths and et cetera. I said, yeah, but the difference here is that when I go buy a house and I see that, that I can't have four bedrooms and three baths, I don't double down and, you know burn everybody else's house down so that I can have my four-bedroom, three-bath house where I want it. And that's what this process looks like to me. But others said they did learn some things, particularly the details of a proposed alternate location at Dockside Cottages, which is just down the road from Blind Bay. It's even more residential there, and people, many people said they don't like that option either. Well, so was there an opportunity for people to actually speak and give public comment? Yes, Mm. and it was tense. This was the first time people have really gotten a chance to talk on the record about Blind Bay after years of uncertainty at this point. And many people got emotional. They pleaded with CBP not to develop this part of the shoreline in the Thousand Islands. And some people said their families have been coming here for generations or they live here full time and they don't want to see this development on the river. This is Julie Twitchell. You know, I've never been to a meeting where it's unanimous. We don't want this. We don't want you building there. We respect our river. We respect the organizations that have the expertise to know this is the wrong place for you to build. So, you know... There were lots of moments like this and even some standing ovations. Well, so so what's next for the print plan? So some people are hoping that this may be the start of some open dialogue and conversation about a new building location. North Country Assemblyman Scott Gray was there, and he advocated for this meeting and really wants to see CBP sit down with the community. What we have to do here is hopefully we're just going to loosen that log jam up and we're going to start having some conversations and hopefully some alternate sites that we have in mind may come up and come forward and then we think we can get everybody in the right direction for the right site that is both pleasing to the community and pleasing to the border patrol there's another public open house tonight at the same place the Ciro recreation arena in clayton and it's from 4 to 7 p.m it will be the same format and if people can't make it or and want to comment on the proposal they can do that through the mail or email and you can find out where to send those at ncpr.org. That public comment period has been extended until July 12th. That was our St. Lawrence Valley reporter, Catherine Wheeler, speaking with Monica Sandreski on our morning news show, Northern Light, this morning. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Ben Cato of Jay and Paul Myers of Colton. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.